In 2012, Lionsgate, the studio behind The Hunger Games, purchased Summit Entertainment, the studio behind The Twilight Saga, thus creating a young adult Hollywood juggernaut. Similar to how Universal specialized in horror back in the day at MGM in the movie musical, Lionsgate and Summit now look to even further expand their roster with November's Ender's Game. Now in an interesting move, Ender's Game is set to debut just three weeks before the second installment of The Hunger Games. So the question is, are they different enough to coexist? That's why today I'm going to introduce you to the world that Orson Scott Card first created back in 1977, the same year that Star Wars A New Hope was released. And sure enough, while Ender's Game might also feature children forced to grow up too fast all of the Hunger Games, it's more in vain with Star Wars, Star Trek, and even Starship Troopers, which increases the potential for major crossover appeal beyond the young adult audience. Add to that adult stars such as Harrison Ford, Ben Kingsley, and Viola Davis, and well, if Lionsgate and Summit play their cards right, and digital domain can stave off bankruptcy long enough to complete the film in time for its November 1st release, then they could have a franchise that doesn't need the young adult asterisks. Ender's Game the film combines the novels Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow to give a comprehensive view of a future where Earth has had to unite against the Formics, an insectoid alien species. After two wars already, the international fleet creates Battle School, where the best and brightest children are trained to lead in the pending third invasion. Think a sci-fi West Point. And Ender's Game is all about brightest, as it's not a soldier's physical prowess which is most valued here, but their intellect. You've got to outsmart the bugs. This is where Andrew Ender Wiggin comes in, played by Hugo's Asa Butterfield, as Harrison Ford's Commander Graf feels this boy will be the one to lead Earth to a definitive victory. Ender's biggest competition at the school is another boy named Bean, the lead character in Ender's Shadow, played by relative newcomer Aramis Knight, who will discover has plenty of his own secrets that make him unique. Ender and Bean excel at battle school and are soon moved up to command school, where they train under war hero Mazer Rackham, played by Ben Kingsley. And while there are mostly boys at battle and command school, there is Petra, who will be played by Haley Steinfeld. And no, thankfully, there's no love triangle between her, Ender, and Bean. But on that same note, Ender's Game features the youngest set of characters in these young adult movies yet, leaving one to wonder if Lionsgate and Summit will allow the movie to be as violent as the book. Yes, Ender kills, and not just bugs. It's been a controversy that has already plagued the novel, so one has to wonder if the film can avoid it, while at the same time still conveying that these young soldiers face real danger and are capable of delivering real danger. Ender's Game will be a special effects heavy movie as battles in space and training in zero gravity are all a part of Card's story. You'll be happy to know though that unlike the recent Olympus has fallen, Lionsgate and Summit haven't cheaped out and have spent over 100 million to make Ender's Game. And still, Digital Domain is going bankrupt. But they didn't just spend that money on special effects as these set picks look more impressive than anything in Twilight or The Hunger Games, and certainly seem to show some signs of legitimate world building. Now, while it does cause some concern that director Gavin Hood's last gig was X-Men Origins Wolverine, the South African native does seem to have found a personal connection to the story. Hood recently blogged that he too was drafted into the army at 17, and can relate not just to Ender's physical experience, but his mental one, learning to lead and also questioning his authority figures in light of that responsibility. In fact, Hood isn't the only soldier to relate to Ender's Game. It's on several of the U.S. Marine Corps' official reading lists. And Hood is lucky to get the second chance after X-Men Origins Wolverine, considering that at one point Wolfgang Peterson was slated to bring Ender's Game to the silver screen, based on a script by David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, the Game of Thrones guys. Even Star Trek's Roberto Orci and Alex Kurtzman took a crack at it. But now Card has trusted Hood and Hood alone to bring his sci-fi opus to the silver screen. And it's time to see if we've got ourselves a genuine Star Wars Junior here. What do you think? Have you read any of the many Ender's Game novels or Marvel comics? And if not, do you think this sounds as cool as I do? Plus, do you think that Orson Scott Card's infamous stance against homosexuality and gay marriage could end up hurting the film? Write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.